From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. And welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. My, oh my, the headlines that we have for you today. They are from around the world, as you well know, but something we're going to deal with right up front, everyone is asking, will the world end? Oh my, Jack is going to deal with that in depth. And why is democracy impossible in most of the Arab world? That's another big headline. And North Korea making missile that's able to hit the United States. But uh, tell me, Jack, will 2012 be better, or do you think it might be worse? Rex, I believe the coming of the Lord Jesus is so near. And as soon as we're raptured away with the come up hither of Revelation 4-1, and we sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, the tribulation hour begins as seven years of 21 judgments upon the earth. I don't believe in the end of the world, and we'll deal with that in a minute. But judgment is coming. 2 Timothy 3, 1 says, This know also that in the last day perilous, dangerous time shall come. Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 25, Nations will be in distress with perplexity in mass confusion. That's far worse than what we've had, but it's coming. Again, because it is the tribulation hour, Jeremiah 30, verse 7, the Jewish prophet speaks and says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is Israel, according to the second Kings 17, 34. Daniel 12, 1, There shall be a time of trouble such as never was, but at that time thy people Israel shall be delivered. God's going to come and protect his ancient chosen people, his wife, Jeremiah 3, 14. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And again, we're talking about Israel because four times God calls Israel his elect in Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, and chapter 65, verses 9 and 22. So, in other words, Jack, there has to be an Israel because that's where the Lord's coming back. Oh, definitely, Rex. All right. Yes. Well, the headline that you're going to see right now, friends, is the question on almost everybody's mind. Will the world end? In 2012, the Mayan calendar will run out on December 21st, 2012. Some believe that planet X will collide with the Earth in 2012. Others say a polar shift will take place, causing an unknown global catastrophe. Millions actually believe the end of the world will occur in the year 2012. Well, you, here you see a gentleman. 12-21-2012, the end is nigh, I think. And the man's never predicted world to end in 2012, the experts say. Now, you know, Jack, that is a big, big, big question. Did, are the experts right? Did the man calendar predict that the world would end in 2012, December 21st? The experts are right. And that agrees with the Bible, for it's a world without end, Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3, 21, as we're going to see in a minute. I read the book, The Fingerprints of the Gods, and it discusses the Mayan society and civilization of hundreds of years ago. And they had five endings of the world. Everyone knows it can't happen five times, so they meant something else. Every time they talked about the end, it was a cataclysmic judgment that would come upon the earth. And one of them was Noah's flood. But the world didn't end. So they said something drastic will happen in 2012. 
on December 21st, and they weren't the only ones, the Mayans and the Aztecs and the I Ching group of China and the Webbot group all predicted that date. Rexel, what's interesting is that every one of the pagan religions of hundreds of years ago said that will be the day of the resurrection of our dead in our religions. Wouldn't it be something if our rapture also occurred? We're not setting the day, but we're listening. Jesus, I command you to know when it's near even at the door, but not the day and the hour. Keep it in context, Matthew 24, verses 33 to 36. Oh, Jack, that's so exciting to yeah, be alive yeah. today, yeah. isn't it? And to know that the time seems to be very, very near. Jesus said, you'll know when it's near, and I believe it certainly is near, but will the world end? Will the world end in 2012? Absolutely not. If you are a premillennialist, as I am, you have to believe that the world will go on for 1,000 more years. Why? Because our Jesus comes as the King of kings and Lord of lords in Revelation 19, verse 16, and rules and reigns upon earth for 1,000 years, Revelation 20, verse 4. However, there are many Christians today completely confused about this because we have amillennialists who don't believe there's going to be a thousand year reign and post millennials who believe that it will come at the end. And that would be probably very, very soon. They're wrong. Why? Six mistranslated verses in Matthew and Hebrews. What are they? They talk about the end of the world in Matthew 13, verses 39, 40, and 49, chapter 24, verse 3, chapter 28, verse 20, and Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. But it cannot be the end of the world. Why? Let me show you. Matthew 24, verse 3. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Tell us, what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? It can't be the end of the world. The Greek should be the end of the age. What age? The church age. The church began on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. And it ends when he says, come up hither. And then the age of the millennium, the thousand years begins. Always put the age, church age, wherever you see end of the world and you get the right translation. Now watch this. And here it is again. Matthew 24, 3. What shall be the sign of your coming in the end of the church age turn the page he's come to rule and reign for a thousand years not because heaven has been recreated there are two words in the greek neos and canis neos always means a new creation canis means a remodeling job he comes back the world is remodeled and that agrees with the catholic catechism amen i don't care what you amillennialists and postmillennialists say he comes back and in matthew 25, you just turned the page now, where it talked about the end of the world, says he comes in the glory of his Father with all the holy angels, and he sits upon the throne of his glory and says in verse 34 to those on earth, come, inherit the kingdom, the 1,000 years prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So the world can't end. But there's so many verses, 120 saying it will never end. Don't you dare say, Vanity is a doomsday preacher. Don't you dare say he's preaching in the world. I don't believe in it. Now, why? The earth abides forever. Ecclesiastes 1.4. You don't need a college education to understand that verse. Psalm 104, verse 5. Yahweh God created the earth and it shall never be removed. Never means never. Jesus is preaching in Matthew 5.5 5, and he says the meek shall inherit the earth. Not heaven. We come back from heaven to inherit the earth. For how long? Psalm 37, 29. The meek and righteous inherit the earth forever and forever. And as I said earlier, that's why Isaiah 45, 17 and Ephesians 3, 21 both say it's a world without end. And praise God, the Catholic Mass ends and has for 2,000 years with this in their closing prayer. World without end. Amen and amen. Yes, amen and amen. And we're so grateful that the Lord made it very clear in the Bible that the world will never end. Was it prophesied in the Bible? Is terrorism prophesied in the Bible? How about it, Jack? Oh, this Bible is so up to date. Even though Jesus said this 1900 years ago, it's happening now. 
And in Matthew 24, 37, he said, As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When I return, it's going to be like it was in Noah's day. And in Noah's day, Genesis 6, 11 says, The world was filled with violence. Hear Jesus again in Luke 21. Verse 9, he says, when you hear of wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrorism, don't be frightened. These things must first come before what? When they're happening and they are, watch the Middle East. Then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass and they're here and now, look up, your redemption draws nigh. That's the redemption and salvation of our bodies. Romans 8, 23, when he says, come up hither and listen to verse 31. He said, when these things are being fulfilled with great touristic activities, it's coming and coming soon. Then what? You know, my kingdom is nigh. I'm ready to return and set up that thousand years on earth. And he went on to say, the generation that lives to see these things, we're seeing them, <laughs> is the generation that shall not pass from the earth. Hang on, sleep well, because one of these days we're going home as soon. Going home. Well, I'll tell you, that brings joy to my heart. Does it bring joy to your heart? Are you ready for the time that you will go home to be with the Lord? Uh, we're going to deal with that in just a moment, how you can know that you're ready to meet the Lord. Well, while I was watching all those riots, friends, something really disturbed me. Watching the Muslims killing each other in those riots because they couldn't have the leader that they wanted. Jack, is there an explanation for that? First of all, we do not believe in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Only born again Christians have God as the Father and Jesus as their Lord and Savior. John 1, 12, as many as received Jesus, received Jesus, received Jesus, to them gave God the power to become sons and daughters. You're not a son or daughter unless you receive Jesus. And you with your comedy team have never received Jesus, and you won't because of what you teach about the prophet Jesus. Galatians 3, 26 says you're all the children of God. No, 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 all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. So these verses having to do with brothers that you've been showing to Christians and they're saying, oh, I'm sorry for the way I feel. No, this has to do with loving one another as Christians. Don't you put your name there in these verses I'm about to quote. Jesus said, by this shall all men know because you're my disciples because of your love one for another. Now, here are the verses they use. 1 John 2, verses 9 to 11. He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. Remember who the brother is, though, another Christian brother. 1 John 3, 14, we know that we've passed from death unto life because we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. Maybe I'll better get that one and put it in your book. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Let me quote it, 1 John 3, 15. It's brief, worth repeating. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth not. He that loveth not knoweth not God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. But boy, this is the one. Everyone knows John 3.16. How about 1 John 3.16? Hereby perceive we the love of God, because God, Jesus, laid down his life for us. Hey, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers and sisters in Christ. Not kill them by the thousands like they're doing in all the Muslim nations now, but showing love and dying for our own brothers and sisters as we protect them. Mm, you know, Jack, I just want to insert one thing really, really quickly, that all the children are children of God. They're all covered by the blood until they come to an age, what the Bible calls the age of accountability, when they make their choice. But every child is covered by the blood. I Amen. love that thought. Every child in the world will go to heaven when they die. Amen, well, Rexel. let me just put this uh, to your mind again. That 
article by Walter Williams, democracy is impossible in most of the Arab world. Is that true? Democracy impossible, Jack? Sharia law forbids democracy in Muslim nations for when their daughter has sex, they put her to death. It's the job of the father, son, or cousin. That wouldn't fit in a democracy. And all the other things. It's perfectly right to lie and use deceit as long as you're trying to promote Islam. That wouldn't work in a democracy. It wouldn't work as far as a Christian put away a lying. Ephesians 4.25. Friends, we're going to go on to something very, very important that has to do with Russia. The beginning of the end for Putin going nuclear. Can Iran's work on a bomb be stopped? North Korea making missile able to hit the United States. I have told almost the whole story there of great problems in the world right now, Jack. We are facing a lot of problems. World War III is about to happen. Nostradamus predicted it for 2012. We'll wait and see. But the Bible says there's going to be the war of the latter years and the latter days, Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. And who will head it up? Russia. And I believe Putin's the man will probably be put back in and there's going to be a bloodbath for those who tried to work against him at this point. And under God, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh, Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2, cities in Russia, they create and fulfill this great war. And you know what's so exciting about all of this, biblically speaking, is here they are willing to protect Syria sending warships in in 2012. Why? Because Syria is with Russia during that war, Isaiah 17, 1. They're forbidding sanctions against Iran. Why? Because Iran is with them, Ezekiel 38, verse 5. Oh, we can go on and on. And the Bible says that North Korea now is in Iran making the weapons. Why? Because Eurasia is what Putin is pushing. And Eurasia is the kings of the East, China and North Korea. And they now are there helping Iran to get that weapon to bomb us. And they have a missile that can hit America soon. But this is the word of God. Study Revelation 9 verses 14 to 18 after the program. Mm. Friends, as I mentioned, are you looking forward to the coming of the Lord? Only the Lord can make everything right. Only the Lord can make your heart right forgive you of your sins and ready for heaven. Will you open your heart to him? Jack, the invitation. Oh, let's calm our hearts. The world's not going to end, but get ready because other things are going to happen. Lord Jesus, save me. Wash me clean from all my sin through that precious blood shed at Calvary so many years ago. Jesus, I trust in you to be my Savior now. Come into my heart. I pray it in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust you prayed that prayer. Please write to me. First Steps in a New Direction will be in the mail as soon as I hear from you. So there's my address. Please write. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven by Dr. Robert Jeffries. All right, I want you to be sure and listen to Bob right now because I would want you to order this. And uh, here's our announcer, Bob. To order your copy of the book, A Place Called Heaven, with the bonus DVD, Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate that. Now, please call or write for the wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven. It's one of the finest books I've ever read on heaven. And of course, it is by Dr. Jeffries. And I have a bonus I'm going to be sending with it when I get your order. And it is 
heaven, the eternal home for some. Friends, you might be saying to yourself, what can I do to make the world better? I'm so small. I want to leave you with this thought. The smallest light still shines in the darkest night. So let your light shine. We're going to look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you so very much. So do we. Bye-bye.